Today we're going to get into this gearbox mechanically, figure out how all these gears work, and figure out how important this index gearbox is to the whole hobbing process to get your tooth count correct. There's also a really neat lubrication system in here, and I've got an update on the giveaway, so we'll go from there. Okay, in our gearbox here, this is a Fart Fowder RS00, uh, and this machine uh, hobs gears, and this is the index gearbox. The importance of this is it has a total of six gears in here. This is E, there's another one called F that's behind it. They're the same size in this particular instance. E and F are called the reversing gears. Then there's a gear quadrant that looks like this when it's out of the box. It's got a little flat on the shaft and I'll show you how that fits. We'll look at that in a second. There's another quadrant here. The quadrant here has a small gear protruding forward and then this one is not on a quadrant shaft. It goes back into the machine and drives up to the platter. So this is how it works and this is what it looks like on paper. So in our index gearbox we have the reversing gears, E and F, F's behind. A and B and then C and D are the ratio gears. So this is what defines how many teeth you're going to cut when you're making a gear. So you're constantly in this gearbox right here changing these gears. The machine standard comes with, change. these are called change gears. It comes standard with change gears roughly from about 30 to 70 or 76, I believe. And that, that distribution of change gears can give you a very wide spectrum of tooth counts. In fact, the, the uh, owner's manual shows you how you can make tooth counts from you know 14 or, or so on up to 100 with that standard set of gears. So it's very universal. But you need to change these when you're, when you're doing a different setup to do manufacture a new set of gears. Now, the kind of cool thing about it is it really embodies, embodies the art of gears because all these are, you're moving these things around and adjusting their center points, center distances, so that they mesh properly and figuring out the ratios, doing just a little bit of math to figure out uh, how to get your tooth count done right. So this is one of the more commonly used uh, it is the most probably commonly used uh, gearbox on the machine. There's another gearbox here for other purposes, but we're just going to focus on this one today. One other thing I want you to notice is, if you look at the end of this shaft, it looks brand new. It's because it is. Since this machine gets a lot of use here with, uh, from the operator, sometimes these, these shafts, these quadrant post, sha post shafts, uh, wear out or the threads get just kind of worn on the end and you certainly don't want anything loose in these gearboxes when they're running. So we, ha we had to just stop the show and make some new quadrant posts for our machine. So all that's been done, they're all in here and we'll see it working in just a second. Let us, uh, let's get everything turned on. Mr. Amp showed up in the house and now we got three phase. So let's see what this looks like when we're running. Okay, this is circuit 15, and it says amp right here, so this was probably the easiest preparation for three-phase ever. We had to change this receptacle right here so that the amp would plug in. The amp's ready to go. So, basically, with all the switches off, we have a 30 and 220 amp breakers, plenty for all of our equipment. It is this easy. Now, start it up, and then you can energize your equipment. Note that those two nuts don't move, but these do on the shafts that go into the machine. So that's how those quadrant posts are supposed to work. The, the correlation between the rotation of the hob and the rotation of the gear blank is what 
the machine does, the whole gear train and transmission in the machine gets the platter that the little green pointer is pointing at to rotate proportional to the hob in this particular way. If the hob goes around 16 times, the platter will go around once, the gear blank will go around once, and that will give you a 16 tooth gear. So by definition, that is the hobbing process. We're all set up here to do a spur gear, and if you watch this carefully, the count works out to be 16, exactly. And that's why hobbing is such a great process, it's very reliable, it gives a high quality blank. Getting back to our ratio, when you plug all these numbers in, you get your gear ratio is uh, 0 0.5. Now usually you decide what the machine constant is and the constant for that fowder, particular fowder is 8 and I want to make a, a gear with a tooth count of 16 and Sure enough, that's the, that's the formula, so 8 divided by the tooth count, 16, gives me a half, and that's what this ratio is. So that's how, this, that's how the machine is set up to work. So you get a new job, you change that to 31, divide 8 by 31, get your ratio, and then change your change gears until you get the ratio correct. Now that's pretty easy to say. But uh, unless you like sitting around doing fractions and ratios and that kind of stuff, it can be kind of tedious. So the computers are here, so you don't need to really sweat it too hard, but we'll go into that at another time. So here are the quadrant posts. I noted the end of one of them in our index gearbox. So the thing about having four fouders and they're all identical is you can fly southwest and when you rig up to make one of these, you might as well make enough for all of them because uh, this is uh, one of the original ones and the, the threads are starting to get a little thin and barren. And when we go to the feed box, which comes up next, the feed and the differential box, these quadrant posts are, are a little smaller. And this is a good example of the small one that is still functional, but uh, the threads you can't, you can't tell from this view, but these threads are pretty bad, and so they even have a threaded on the inside to try to make a connection. And then as you can tell, this one's just broken off, so there's no, and it's threaded on the inside so you can put a bolt in there. So there's been a lot of cobbling together on these machines, and then once we finally understood it and took one apart and diagnosed it, we thought, gosh, let's make some. They're a real simple system, but Let's carry on and look at the big one that goes in the index box. This is actually a sleeve, and the brilliance of this is this shaft doesn't have to be all that precise other than maybe these flats, but what needs to be precise on the shaft is all these dimensions coming this way. I'll show you why. Um, I've already put this one back together, but there's a pin here, roll pin that goes in here, and the lubrication drips right here comes around to the back end of this so that when it's assembled it'll fully lubricate the quadrant. So that spins nicely. You put your other gear here. They're locked together with that keyway. There's a, that's just a spacer to give you the right spacing for the other gears that you're going to mesh on. And then when you screw this all together it tightens on uh, this shaft is a little bit longer than this one, so when you snug it up, uh, these gears spin beautifully, but this nut, nut shouldn't turn. And at the same time it's tightening that, it tightens it on the, uh, the, sh the uh, don't know what it's called actually, but it's part of this universal transmission, and these can slide in and out, all right? So, when you tighten it, it tightens the whole assembly, it sets a center distance between the gears, makes it universal, it's all done by hand, you hand assemble this, and 
it's just a masterful piece of not only lubrication design, uh, machine de design, and mechanical, mechanical ingenuity. So this is a small quadrant post, and this is how it works. This, is, this shaft is coming in and out of the machine, and these slots allow this to pivot. So you can put different size gears in your universal transmission. And these can slide up and down uh, on this shaft to make your gears fit. It's a wonderful design. And there's that lubrication port right on top. And that's about where it's located in the machine. Sometimes these are twisted a little bit, but there's enough of a gouge there for this to gather up the lubrication. We saw it dripping and dropping in that last, uh, that last video. So that's how the universal gearbox works. There's all the parts to it. That's how it goes together. And that's what makes that box function. And we're just uh, getting all the elements of it put back together nicely so it's reliable for another long period of time. The index drawer is the one that you get into most. So these tended to have problems with the threads. And gosh, the, the feed gears, boy, they actually had breakage. Uh, what, what we have left over from all the founders is this piece and this piece. And then a lot of them don't even have this piece. It's gone because it broke off. So uh, we probably need to understand that a little better. But from what I could tell on the machines is just a real simple piece of these machines seems to be a problem in the original design. And that's the the bellows that hold the uh, hold the chips from getting into the machine is, is very close to where the clusters of these gears run and uh, on the inside of the machine. It looks like those can get jammed up and that's why these get broken off. Nonetheless, masterful design. And that's how the, the rest of the index box works there. Okay, we have two winners of our giveaway that we cannot find it's been 30 days and we want to get some rings out there we want to get these two prizes out there it's first and second prize so here's what we're going to do go to our webpage, evolvingdesign.com go to the contact list put your name and address and email here and in the category go down to youtube make this youtube and then write a description in let's just do it i'm going to put john Doe and Doe at uh, something.com. And then I want you to write, I should get, tell us why, tell us about yourself and tell us that you want the rings and what you're going to use this for and how many Jacob Chucks you can save. Send it in. We'll be quick with it. We'll make a decision and we'll send it back out. So if you're watching this on YouTube, come. Put your name in here, sign up for our newsletter. We don't really bother you too much. Hit submit. We'll get these prizes out to you, okay?